Hi, I thought I'd make a video because this is the end of the European leg of my sort of recovery tour and holiday. And I'd, first of all, I'd like to thank everyone for such a warm welcome and hospitality and the support that I've been given over the last sort of 18 months, which has been fantastic. I want to do a special thanks to Pierre Luigi Mauro, Zolt Galba in Budapest, and Tamas Kaczmarski here in Sombate uh, for organizing my workshops and seminars. The, um, the welcome and the um, hospitality has been fantastic. Thank you, everybody, and thank you also to the people who attended. Now, highlights, I just thought I'd mention a few th amazing things that um, um, my wife and I saw during our journey. First of all, the one that sticks out the most from a historical point of view is Diocletian's Palace, sorry, um, which is a living city in Split in Croatia, which we both thought was just amazing. And as you can imagine, the, the city basically got um, built and Diocletian his palace was built it wasn't a fortress it was a palace it was somewhere he showed off his wealth and um you know the fellow roman senators would travel there just to specific, you know be in this amazing place and then the middle ages came along and um the place was rather than being knocked down it was all the building materials were repurposed and a medieval city got built within the uh, the uh, the castle the palace walls pardon me and uh, something that was unknown until fairly recently was that under Diocletian's palace, there was a series of cellars. And during the Middle Ages, they used those for dumping their rubbish and sewerage. When the cellars were discovered, they've been emptied and they're in a remarkably good condition. And um, they're now open for viewing. It's all been emptied out and it's very beautiful. And because of the layout of the cellars, they can now really assess where, even down to the finer points, like where Diocletian's dining room was, where you know various things happened throughout the palace. And the palace was also used, um, and some of the, um, the subterranean areas were used in um, Game of Thrones, which I'm sure many people know about. So that's number one, really worth visiting. If anybody, any, anybody's traveling in Croatia, you really need to go to a Split, it's called, in Croatia. The next thing that I think is worth mentioning, which was a really supply, a big surprise to me, um, I was resistant to it at first, but I did a Pachlavandl review video, which many people have seen now. It's been very, very well received. And I, you can see two of them standing here upside down and they, they're very small you know the traveler's best friend basically if you swing clubs this is what you want i'd recommend you, you either buy one set or buy two sets they're fantastic um you can use different size bottles in them you do have to check for the bottle sizes but basically the um they work really well and you don't you're not carrying a load and as you can see i've got quite a few clubs here which is making my luggage very very heavy and difficult to handle and the next time I travel it will certainly be two pairs of these and that's going to be it so I mean really highly recommended so that's Ron Bader and um, Terry Sanchez in Denmark have come up with this idea if you want to, to be interested in the handles go to heroicsport.com and you'll find them there okay so moving on meeting new people with common interests has been a highlight for me Obviously, Indian clubs, Persian meals, the Garda mace, and now adding to my collection, the, the Hungarian hammer. Thank you, Tamas. Um, okay, moving on again. There are now, other things that I've done on the way through with um, Pierre Luigi. My computer's just, uh, screen's just gone off. We, we went to the Roman thermal baths, and we did two workshops in the city of Vecchia. And I always like to go to baths anyway, special thermal baths. Then um, Turkish thermal baths in um, Budapest. A seminar organized by Zolt Galba in Budapest also. And then um, a great evening spent celebrating St. Stephen's Day here in Hungary, which is a big occasion. 
um, with fireworks at the end of the day. We had dinner with Zolt and Victoria Kiss and a, um, a couple of others. Uh, forgive me, but I, I can't remember the names exactly. Um, so it was a great day. Thank you very much. Then moving on, we have we're in Sombate, we have the historical carnival. Um, which we watched and it lasts for about an hour and I've just thought I'd put this helmet here because it's got a quite a sort of Romanesque type plume at the top, a bit horrendous looking at the bottom here with broken tooth and the rest of it. But it was amazing seeing all these guys dressed up and they, as the carnival moved through the streets they stopped in front of um, uh, seating areas and they th um, basically turned around and aggressively thrust their swords at the crowd which is very entertaining and amusing to watch and i've got a few clips which i'll post later about that and then of course uh, we did the, a seminar in sombate yesterday including um tamas kachmaski showing me how to swing the um hungarian hammer which is basically done one-handed surprising um how, amount of control that you have to have because the distance between your hand down here and the head is quite large and then um, for the that's for the swing between the legs and then the the swing behind you like a mace swing is done from the end of the handle so the hand has to move from um, into two different positions as you're swinging one-handed remember quite difficult so I'll be doing lots of practice with that one and I've still got to work out a way of traveling with it, as you can imagine. So now on uh, next moves are we're moving to um, Vienna in a couple of days, then on to London and then uh, the USA, Wilton, Connecticut, where we'll be doing the intensive Garda Mace and Indian Clubs basic workshop, which has been organized by Kelly. Thank you, Kelly, for all the work that you've done and with Kevin Rail, who is now on his way east from where he lives um, by road. And he's gonna be doing a sort of public commentary on his um, healthy food intake and um, the things he does. I've also sort of asked Kevin, and hopefully he will do it, is to give us a, um, a, a sort of an update on how he um, you know, does his recoveries from getting sort of sleepy and tired when he's driving onto um, you know, and then continuing on the road and being safe um, and driving safely. And I know that um, a special mention to Dina, who's also traveling, I think, a week later to come to the workshop, which is very exciting. So to finish off, I'm very excited to and looking forward to meeting everybody at the workshop in Wilton CT. And we will be meeting um, old friends and new friends. It'll be fantastic. Um, whilst I remember any of you who have never swung Indian clubs and maces before, please check the video that I've made um, in preparation for you. A little bit of homework is not a lot of work, but it just makes makes things a lot easier and just gets your joints, especially in the in the gripping section um, and also in the transverse turns, because those are very very two very important areas that we'll be covering in detail during the workshop. So for the time being, I'm signing out and I'll, um, I'll be posting more as I go along. But probably the next time I will see you all will be in the USA. So bye for now and see you in the next video.